Hey everybody, my name's Sean. I'm CEO over here at Waypoint and I'm here with our uh, creative director, Joe. What's up, Joe? What's up everyone? What's up, Sean? Uh, this is a series of videos we're making and this is the first one. I'm gonna walk you through a bit about what we do and then we're gonna talk specifically about uh, one of the things that we do, which is trailers. And so Waypoint's a, a creative agency that started 15 years ago, and there's just about 50 people working full time in our shop. We're focused exclusively on the video game industry, and we do three different things. And in no particular order, those things are creative, collectibles, and e-commerce. And so creative covers almost all the marketing assets a video game company could dream of. And collectibles is the physical items, and that could range from making one giant statue all the way to making 30,000 or 100,000 units for a collector's edition. We also do something in the middle called influencer kits, which is where we will make 50 or 200 units of something really neat to send out to all you influencers out there. Uh, so today, like I said, we're talking about trailers, which is in the creative services department. And uh, Joe's going to walk us through some of the finer points of how to make not only a regular trailer, but a great trailer. That's right, Sean. And today we're going to take a closer look at some of the important points to consider during your creative process and also to make sure that your trailer looks great, but also captivates your audience and is speaking to the correct audience. All right. So like I said, we're going to talk about trailers today. So Joe, can you give us uh, some good things to think about when we consider the basics of mm -hmm. making a video game trailer. Absolutely. So yeah, a couple of things you want to think about are definitely your audience. You know, who are you speaking to with this? What do you want them to take away from it? Um, you also need to consider, is your game a new game? Is it a new IP that nobody knows? Or is it already well known and can we dive right in? Um, also, you know, think about the assets you have available, what you have to work with. Do you have concept art? Do you have 3D models? Things like that all sort of go into our pre-production process to help roll out what this thing might look like. Yeah, sometimes we get assets, uh, but sometimes we, we don't get a lot of assets and we have to recreate them or make them from scratch. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thankfully our creative team helps with that a lot. Um, 3D modeling, rigging, all of that good stuff if we need to. Uh, we can also animate static key art and bring it to life, which is really fun. Um, and then, you know, we could also even capture gameplay for you, which uh, we've been doing on a couple recent trailers to, um, you know, illustrate those game mechanics and get some stuff to work with and start editing. Um, the next part of making a trailer, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, is writing a good script. And so we sometimes spend, in my humble opinion, way too much time making the script, but it's a process that we work uh, on with the customer pretty closely and there's lots of back and forth. What do you say about making scripts? Yeah, and uh, you know, I think one of the reasons for that, that is a good point that you bring up that we do spend a lot of time on it. One of the reasons for that is because there's a lot of moving pieces, right? And there's multiple editors, there's a producer, there's a director, there's people working on VO and having every little action and every little cut almost spelled out with, from animation to what the VO line synced at that particular moment is, helps like all those parties sync up together. So uh, you could do it with one person who's really creative, who understands everything from sound design to editing to the gameplay and what you're trying to show. But uh, having a good technical script, that's what we call it, helps us align all those parties working on the trailer. So, yeah. The next thing I was thinking of, Joe, is uh, what are the different types of trailers? Sometimes it's confusing, not only for, um, for people out there watching them, but even for our own customers. Uh, there's a lot of different types of trailers and they all serve a different purpose. For example, uh, a gameplay trailer and there's a bunch more types you know, what, do you, th what right. do you think yeah you see all those on youtube you know when you're on ign you'll see several different trailers come out during the leading up to a game's launch and probably the two most common are the announcement trailer right that tells everyone hey this is coming be on the lookout for it and the launch trailer which is really the big reveal on usually drops on launch day um, and gives you the best look to date of what that game's going to feature and what it's all about um, there's also a couple other others though uh, gameplay trailer, cinematic trailer, um, all of these are kind of woven into the marketing beats of, uh, of the, the dev and publisher to make sure all the information gets out there to the audience in time. We're working on a bunch of trailers for the next uh, Pac-Man game right now. Yep, and, that's right. Uh, some of them are 2D, some of them are 3D, some of them are long, some of them are short. And so how do you define uh, the difference between a, a gameplay trailer and an announcement trailer. 
Well, so the uh, the launch trailer is usually kind of the most exciting because that's when we get to reveal the most. You know, they want to save some surprises uh, for that launch day, right? When they make an announcement or teaser. So it's great to build anticipation, but then uh, for that particular trailer that you mentioned, we're on the, the launch trailer and we got to come in guns blazing and do a, a full cinematic 3D rendering of this world. Um, they gave us, you know, a little bit more creative control than we usually get, which is awesome. So we were able to bring all these packs to life um, in full 3D with character animation, VFX. It looks absolutely awesome. I guess making a, a Pac-Man from scratch is a lot easier than making a Chocobo from scratch. That's true. The, the 3D modeling was more challenging than you think, but it wasn't the worst. You know, it was, it was pretty simple. <laughs> so we talked about launch trailers, announcement trailers, gameplay trailers. You mentioned cinematic, and I, I make a difference between a cinematic trailer and a story-driven trailer. Cinematic has usually cutscenes uh, from the game, or even uh, an agency that makes 3D animated or 2D animated scenes that aren't necessarily in the game, but there's no gameplay or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and we have a story-driven trailer, and what do you think about that? Story-driven trailer, I feel like is based more on narrative, more on voiceover. Uh, the ones that you were talking about previously are more like um, those ones from League of Legends or Diablo that you see, right? Where it's almost like a short film and gives you like a window into the game's universe. Um, those are absolutely awesome, definitely very involved and take a long time to make if you're doing all that from scratch. But you can also have a very story-driven you know, narrative trailer, like a story driven trailer, like you're talking about that makes use of things like key art, you know, like for example, um, Elden Ring did something like that, where they uh, sort of introduced the world and the story with this haunting voiceover and uh, made use of just concept art. So you can still have a lot of narrative without having to fully build out a short film. Yeah. On the polar opposite side of the story trailer, there's something that uh, we do is called a, a release date trailer. The release date itself is an important and exciting marketing event. Right. Everybody wants to know when the heck's this game coming out. Yeah. And so sometimes we do a release date trailer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that relates to sort of, you know, something that every trailer should have, which is a great call to action or a great kind of sign off at the end. You know, where are you directing people? What's the purpose? And so uh, there's tons of anticipation every year for those release date trailers. We see that at Summer Games Fest. We see that um, at all the gaming trade shows, right? Just getting that release date is huge for the fans. So uh, that's an awesome thing to build up to. And then they drop that at the end or they drop available for download later today. Like I love seeing stuff like that. It really generates a ton of excitement online. Sure. The next two things, or the last two I can think of, are the um, DLC trailers and also like a teaser. We didn't really explain what's the difference between a teaser trailer and a regular launch trailer, for example. So DLC and, and uh, teaser, what do you say? Yeah, so teaser, I feel like kind of depends on how much stuff is available. Maybe they have like an early build of the game and just a few things are, are good to show at that point in time. But you can still sort of use title cards or use other animation and motion graphics to, to build something out of that. Um, and the DLC was the other one you said, right? So DLC is more geared toward a specific audience, I would say. You know, you see that a lot with like already established games, um, but still an important part when you're trying to come back and build up energy again after your game success or after a marketing beat you already had. Um, we saw that recently with Elden Ring as well, um, their DLC announcement. Um, and yeah, tons of games definitely like to give you a closer look at what you can expect. But at that point, the audience is more uh, already been captured, right? And you're speaking to them like, hey, come back. This is going to be sick. You, you spend a, a lot of time working directly with the team. You know, the team, when I say the team, I mean uh, video editors, graphic designers, 3D animators, 3D modelers, uh, sound designers. Um, and that kind of stuff. And one of the things we go back and forth on a lot is the structure of the trailer. So how do you structure a trailer uh, well, or in a good way, I should say? Yeah, structuring the trailer. Um, so I guess for that, a lot of it is done in pre-production. Um, you know, we like to start with something called a treatment, which is basically like a short paragraph that sort of sums up like, hey, what's this gonna be about? Uh, tell me the story using basic language uh, in one paragraph. And from there, we'll kind of move on, collect some mood boards, some we'll maybe even make style frames to help illustrate like the visual look. And we put that together with a technical script, which I guess is the biggest 
uh, format for structuring a trailer. Uh, a lot of people jump straight to the storyboard or they're familiar with a storyboard. It's kind of like a main uh, way of structuring a video. But we use something called a technical script, which is really great because it has voiceover notes, it has sound design notes, and it goes shot by shot and it helps inform that storyboard later on. Uh, so technical script and storyboard, I think, are the two big pieces there. And what kind of stuff do we put in trailers usually? We sometimes capture live action footage or gameplay or what goes in there and what's more important or how do they work together? Yeah, so a couple of core components, I guess, definitely live action footage is possible. Um, title cards, we always see those and slates are, they're still an effective way to sort of communicate your message and help have little chapters to your story. Um, gameplay footage, right? That's one of the things that we capture uh, with our team in-house. It's fun because we actually get to play the game um, sometimes early, which is really cool. And uh, sometimes cinematic shots from other parts of the game. Um, what else? And sometimes full on CG stuff that we actually build. So those are all the things in the melting pot. And then with a really slick edit, they all come together. So let's move on. After, after we talk about uh, setting it all up and uh, what we're going to put in there, uh, there's something you and I talk about all the time, which is the tone or the style of the trailer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's got to be my favorite part. That's where a lot of the creative and art direction comes into play. So um, the best thing for this is just, you know, references and style frames. I would say like um, it's awesome to sort of cook up a sneak peek. We'll open up at one of our 3D programs, get the 3D team together and render just one frame to give like a taste. And uh, this helps like when we're pitching, but also in just the look development process in general. Like it's really fun to try out uh, different styles. Like we did one recently where we were trying to get comic book animation similar to Spider-Verse, right? Or we'll do really sort of serious gothic tones with dripping wax, like any sort of, uh, it's really quick these days to sort of iterate real look development like in 3D. And that's part of like what's so great about having that 3D team is getting, getting it. That, that phase, when I was the creative director at Waypoint years ago, uh, that phase of trying to nail down the style uh, was sometimes a bit of a sticking point. You know, the team wants mm -hmm. to do something sure. artsy and creative, and the customer doesn't want us to modify their art or their assets. No, yeah. Right? yeah, and so my philosophy on that is always give three options, right? You can't go wrong if one is crazy and intense and wild and probably the one you want to do and then a few safer bets and some just uh, creative but tasteful. It's always good to like give them the option to choose. Yeah, I'm not saying we do this all the time, but sometimes we give them the option Joe wants to do and then two bad options. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we try not to, I swear, I swear. We're always trying to elevate our clients, so. Uh, what about sound? We were talking about Lucio, the sound designer, uh, but sound, music or sound design uh, mm -hmm. plays a big, uh, big role in the video. Something we've, we've learned, um, I'd say halfway through the, the life of our company. It's something I didn't accord a lot of importance to. And when you joined the team and we started up in the game a little and making higher quality videos, we realized that sound makes a big difference. Yeah, definitely. And I think lately we've been going even further trying to reinforce all this like great animation that we do with sound. Can you lead with courage? Can you make tough choices? But once you start thinking about, okay, like sound design and animation, how do those two things work together? Um, picking an awesome, picking from an awesome library of sounds and even having, like we talked about Pac-Man, having the little jump sound effect or having a crowd cheering, but there's also the Pac-Man waka waka sound effect hidden in there, right? So tiny details like that, when you're listening on headphones or you actually have great monitors, you can start to pick up on some of that and it makes the animation shine even more. All right, there's always one thing that I uh, force the customers to provide us. Most, most experienced customers or customers that are used to writing briefs for, for agencies like us yep. um, don't struggle with this, but it's what we call the USPs, the unique selling points. Yeah, and so critical. We, it's really important for us, especially if we're not familiar with the game or, or um, what to focus on. And so I think one of the things we need to consider all the time is uh, what are those USPs? And not only what are they, but how are we going to do, see, and show? How are we going to highlight the USPs, but how are we going to also make what we're saying or writing in a call-up mm -hmm. 
match with what's on the screen. What do you think? Right. Yeah. So uh, as like an agency, right, we have to work closely uh, in understanding what the goals are for something like this. Um, so we can't just go in and too much creative uh, gives you something that's fun to watch, but maybe has no like uh, results or doesn't hit or resonate with the fans too much marketing and it feels like a sales pitch. So we have to like balance that. And one of the ways we do that is understanding okay, with this particular game, what is it that we want to to show, like you're saying? And then we can weave that into more of like a narrative-based trailer or an interesting story uh, while still making sure we touch on all those things. And sometimes it's not so in your face. It's, it's not like, oh, new, new DLC available now, like download now. It doesn't have to be a bunch of download now. Sometimes it's just like, we're introducing a new mechanic this season in our game. Uh, and so we get some really great shots of that and we show it off. Um, I couldn't agree more. I, I think that uh, coming up with those USPs and making them resonate is one of the one of the strengths that we have. Is sometimes we have a, a game that maybe you know the, the graphics aren't that great, but the gameplay is great, and mm -hmm. it's up to us to of course sell the game because the trailer is a marketing asset. Yeah, and it's up to us to point that out, but in a, a more subtle way to the to viewers. Right, and I guess related to that is that title cards can only do so much, right? So. We need a, a killer edit to go along with that, that takes you through what our sort of outline is for the story of this trailer. Uh, the edit has as much to do with that as like the title cards that you see and the actual uh, animated text that you see in the trailer. And the gameplay footage, you know, as much as we, uh, we like to say how awesome the game is and title cards mm -hmm. or, or show it off in that way, uh, there's nothing that beats showing gameplay footage. Uh, however, it's, it, it's a double-edged sword uh, where we need yeah. to show uh, the right gameplay footage or maybe the game isn't in a good state to, to show the sure. gameplay at this point. So what do you think about showing gameplay footage? Yeah, I think it's great. I think there are a lot of trailers that sort of phone it in a bit when it comes to gameplay footage because you are dealing with a completed game. This is how it looks. Like we want to show it honestly, but at the same time, I think there, if you look at some really great trailers, they still do editing tricks like crash zooms or match cuts or cutting on action like all of those editing principles still come into play like when they're working with the gameplay footage and i think like that makes it look awesome without necessarily being too misleading about like what you can expect with the game uh, and that's you know another thing that goes along with it right it's like we want to honestly showcase these games in their best light and so sometimes you'll have a cinematic trailer and it's the old bait and switch where the game looks nothing like that. So when you get to actually show the gameplay, it does give you that honest look at like what the game is. I, I remember when we drove down to the, the offices of Sega to capture gameplay footage on the Puyo Puyo mm -hmm. Tetris game. And we used I that. wasn't there for that one, actually. That, that was Lex and I. That yeah. was Lex and I, yeah. <laughs> we had to pack up this computer that I had built myself. Yep. And we packed it up into the Pelican case. Uh, we uh, shoved it into my truck, drove all the way down to the Orange County area, mm -hmm. and we whipped that thing out in their offices, and we started capturing footage uh, with the capture card built into the computer, and we were able to capture it in uh, 4K, and that was a big deal back then. And so <laughs> yes. uh, we got we got home with all the footage, and uh, we were quite proud of having done the whole the whole kit and caboodle of capturing the footage ourselves. Yeah, yeah it's not site. easy. I mean, sometimes you have to learn the dev commands and the debugging commands for the game. And I mean, it's always great to be able to give yourself infinite health. That feels pretty awesome. Um, we talked about title cards and there's uh, one that I think the customers often consider the most important, which is the last one or the call to action where we see some kind of animated end screen and where there's usually a call to action now and you were saying don't always put buy now or download now and so what do you think about the call to action i mean like available now is an effective call to action right buy now download now especially uh if that's the main purpose of your trailer is converting people and you're going to use it for uh paid marketing or performance marketing then i think there's a time and place for it right but um other times like it's just uh a nice little kind of period on the end of a great trailer and it's certainly easy enough in this day and age for everyone to find all the links they need to find coupled with the trailer so it's sort of uh i guess we see it more on kind of like assets that are used for paid marketing or a b testing where we really want to uh, hit some marketing performance goals and there's a whole science behind that that we won't that i won't bore you with right now 
but um, yeah, it's sort of, I guess, is situational. And like, usually we make tons of different variations of a trailer and change that around on them as well. So it could be multiple things with just using the same trailer. So I'm not trying to trigger you here, but uh, I'm going to whip out a few sentences that sometimes drive me crazy. And maybe you too. Is okay. Customers ask us to make things pop or can you tighten it up? And yes. So what do they mean when they're saying stuff like that? So tightening it up. Yeah, that's a great one. I love this segment. Um, tightening it up, it to me usually refers to the pacing of the edit, right? Which can sometimes lag if things aren't lined up with the VO or if a shot lasts for too long. Um, you know, it's loosey goosey. So we need to tighten it up like that. That one makes sense. And what was the other one you said? We got to make it pop. We got to make it pop. So that I translate to make the logo bigger. Right. <laughs> but also, you know, with that, like, of course you can bring in color. Like you got to make sure all your design principles are at play here, like, um, contrast and, you know, making sure you're right, using the right color theory to make sure things jump off the background. Um, a lot of times it's negative space too, right? Like making sure there's not too much going on the screen at once, like letting elements breathe, like how big your text is, how big your legal lines are, any animated components that you have on screen. Like it's, it's interesting cause you still, even though everything's moving in a video, people definitely still think about composition, like design composition for each frame. And so sometimes in the storyboard we're able to like show that and get or in those style frames i was talking about we're able to see like okay this shot this is the composition there's a main character you know if we really want to get into it we use the golden ratio and try to make sure that you know this is going to look great um even when the shot's moving as an agency i know that our goal is to uh, deliver things that are uh, high quality or high end uh, and kind of spare the customer from all of the pain we go through to make something. Um, I know that uh, suffering involves some mistakes. And so if I was to ask you, you know, what are the top mistakes that maybe you catch from the guys in house before the, uh, the deliverable gets sent off to the customer? Um, yeah, I think like using unfinished assets, not great. Like uh, sometimes that's all we have to work with and that we always hit a snag with like, oh, actually, we decided to take that character out at the last minute so we can't use that but we're already really deep into it and maybe we based the whole trailer around that character um, so that can definitely kind of create issues i think you know another one mistakes to avoid like not using a real copywriter everyone this is like one of those things everyone thinks they know how to do and there have been you know breakthroughs with chat gpt lately i mean we can get a lot further than we used to be able to but uh really having like good copy that's like engaging and like we talked about voiceovers and having it sound like it's from that world. Uh, this is like an awesome opportunity to have people working on your game, uh, like give that personality to your trailer, right? So like it bridges the gap between the devs and uh, yeah. an agency. A person that knows how to tell a good story mm -hmm. is worthwhile. For sure. Yeah, it grabs your attention right away. On the on the post-production side or the animation side, how do uh, how could we screw up? It's usually like technical, not really technical things. It's usually like license, uh, licensor approval things, right? So um, things will need to maybe like we inverted something or, you know, which like you're not really supposed to do. So I can't believe I just admitted that. But maybe like some things revert, we reversed the art or something, but that art can only be shown going from left to right. Or maybe we uh, didn't use the right sort of like texture for the costume of a character and it's a very specific um, sort of look and feel to it. Like all of those things, we wanted to, I guess, be true to the game and the world and the IP. So sometimes in the like spirit of making it look awesome and slick and like, like of the times today, we negate like kind of uh, the real licensors IP version of things. And so we have to be true to that. Yeah, a bit of overzealous. Yeah, right. I remember once we were doing a live action trailer for a Switch game and uh, the camera crew that we were using didn't have appropriate microphones. And so the sound came out terrible. Yeah, that has, you know, happened more than once, I hate to admit. Um, but yes, being prepared with like the right equipment, if you're gonna do a shoot on set, like just pre-production, doing pre-production properly. I mean, it, at the time it seems like kind of a buzzkill because you're just excited to get on set, but like that does save you a lot of time. Even thinking about things like catering and making sure we brought the right mics, the right lights. Uh, is our space big enough to fit everyone, right? We've had that problem before too. <laughs>
Um, so yeah, but I don't know. I'm definitely used to running around getting last minute props uh, for stuff like that. So it's kind of part of the fun. All right, Joe, so let's talk about uh, some of the things we've done in the past, and that might help us illustrate some of the concepts we're going over here today. Uh, one of the more adventurous things we did recently was a giant billboard video corner of a building yep. on the Strip. Yeah, so I finally realized from one of my lifelong dreams since moving to LA, which is to work on a billboard, like a real piece of physical media, or f yeah, physical ad display. And this was an awesome project. It was uh, for Evo in Las Vegas, fighting game tournament, really big deal. Uh, and we got to use a like two, three story LED video screen on the side of this building and create the assets for that. And so it was for Tekken 8. And the way we did it was uh, from the perspective of the corner, it creates like an illusion that something's living inside of this building. So it used two faces of the building and we were able to uh, put some awesome sort of tech in world. It's raining, there's lightning, it's really like uh, gr gritty. And we have the character sort of flying out of that with a floating screen and breaking chains. I mean, yeah, this thing looked awesome. We pulled that together in just a couple days. I was about to say, and wasn't that a bit of a quick turnaround? Right? Yeah, it was like five or six days. Uh, 3D team got together and built the environment. We had to do some crazy uh, texture mapping to get the perspective just right. And then the motion graphics team kind of closed it out with all the right logo animations and copy. And yeah, we shipped it. Let's talk about the, um, the Hot Wheels trailer we did. It's a bit of, bit of a bit of a while ago, if I'm not mistaken, but we did a full 3D animated Hot Wheels trailer. Mm hmm Yeah, and so this one I think was for a Roblox Hot Wheels collab, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but yeah, I was really proud of the the environment in this one. It was super candy, colorful Hot Wheels world. Um, this is like sort of really the look that we were going for when we first made our mood boards, and I think we absolutely nailed it in the final thing. But uh, in the beginning, we sort of touched on how to customize your car, maybe how to customize your character. And the basically, there's this shot of the garage door opening. All these rays of sun shoot in, and you, like, peel out into the world. And then, like, from there on out, it's just, like, this colorful, awesome landscape uh, blurred behind you, you know, and you jump off a ramp at the end. So really, like, kind of got the high-octane racing feel, but also um, all that customization was, like, integrated, too. We did a few other trailers for, for Roblox, if I'm not mistaken, or for Roblox games, I should say. And uh, mm -hmm. there was He-Man, American Girl World, if I'm not mistaken, is that right? Yep, yeah, American Girl, that was like the most recent one I think we worked on for that. But yeah, Roblox is cool, I mean, really cool platform, but they're always sort of doing collaborations with uh, bigger brands to sort of bring people in and give them like a game experience. Um, and it's super kind of modular and there's like a lot for developers there. So that's why a lot of times you're able to uh, experience developers can put together and can an experience geared towards something they like. But anyway, this isn't an ad for Roblox or anything. I just think they're cool. Um, but yeah, for American Girl, we it's sort of like a, a introduction to American Girl world. Uh, we got a lot of their assets like from the um, like from the game to sort of work into a CG trailer. So they gave us things like the store, they gave us things like the downtown area or the airport, and we sort of repurposed those, retextured and made our own characters. And we had the camera flying around and there's like a little star that travels through the city and reveals each of those locations. So that's what we did for them. All right, that's about it for uh, how to make a compelling trailer. This is the first video in a series of many videos that are gonna come out. And I uh, want to thank you guys for watching. Thanks, Joe, for uh, being here with me. Thank you. I had a great time. And if you guys liked it, maybe you could subscribe so that uh, you get notification next time we drop another video. And uh, if you have any comments or feedback, let us know in the, in the comments below.